Hi everyone, I'm Carissa, and this is a Gen Z critique on SOC 2. So to start off with, I interviewed 50 software engineers and tech executives to get the lowdown on governance, risk, and compliance, GRC, specifically on SOC 2, the compliance framework that everyone loves to hate but can't ignore. And so here's how the interview went down. I asked three questions. The first being, what is SOC 2 in your own words? And are there any brave souls that would like to share their take on what SOC 2 is? Yes. Um, some, somewhat, right? But you are the only person who answered this question amongst the 20, 30 people okay. here. <laughs> yes. It's a way to prove that you're a large enough company that you can afford to give money to coal fire. I think it's so <laughs> funny <laughs> that you mentioned that. Uh, <laughs> um, but anyways, this is some response I got. But before I like go any further, I'm going to spill the tea on the survey. And spilling the tea is just like giving you gossip in Gen Z slang. Um, here are some people who answered. Someone said a nightmare of compliance that feels more sorcery than anything else. NGL, I have no idea other than it's something that smaller companies often can't afford. A big pain in the butt or maybe a distraction from making Redacted secure. And I honestly have no idea, although I came across it while setting up some DB related monitors. So there's an overall theme. I think most people think it's like busy work and they don't have a clue with what SOC 2 really is. And now I have another question for you guys. How many of you guys actually read your company's policies with a show of hands? Okay, so for the people who didn't raise your hands, like you guys can low key get fired, but <laughs> um, it's okay, I'm not a big mouth. But I'm going to give you guys more tea. And regarding this, no, no, okay, so there was chart, but 33.3% of the people I surveyed just sign off without a second glance. Another 33.3%, they just skim through it. Um, and another 10%, they don't even read it at all. And then 10%, they actually read through the policies, which is a really low number. And the other 13%, I think they were just like vibing with the survey, honestly. So what is the key takeaway here? Software engineers are allergic to SOC 2. And most people are not oblivious to SOC 2 unless they're higher up in their career ladders, like CISOs. But since not a lot of people know what SOC 2 is, is this a good or a bad thing? And this is what we'll dive into in this talk. So hi, everyone. Today, I'll be dropping a Gen Z critique on SOC 2. And who is Gen Z? Um, me and probably your most recent batch of hires at the company you're at. And before I go any further, I just want to quickly introduce myself. Um, I'm Carissa. I have actually became interested in cybersecurity since high school when I competed in different CTFs in security competitions. I then went on to Berkeley and started immediately at SEMGREP as a security TPM. And during my time there, I actually got a lot of hands-on experience with SOC 2 and GDPR compliance. And then, just like a fun fact, I'm a content creator for fun. Okay, so this is our agenda. We'll dive into what SOC 2 is, what the implementation entails. Um, I'll also break down the entire process for all of you guys. And then we'll hit some of the benefits and my critiques on SOC 2 and the closing statement and so forth. Also, quick disclaimer, are there any auditors here? Oh. <laughs> I don't want to offend anyone. <laughs> I, I just want to keep it very fun and informative. I'll be using Gen Z slang throughout with translations on the bottom. So, yeah, let's get started. So, SOC 2 is so boring. I don't know if you guys know, but SAR is the new so for Gen Z, but you need to have it with the Australian accent. Um, so it might seem boring at a first glance, but it's essentially a framework for auditing and reporting on controls related to the five trust service criteria, which is security, availability, processing integrity, confidentiality, and privacy. 
These criteria form a framework for organizations to demonstrate their commitment to maintaining a secure environment. And the AICPA crafted, it, crafted SOC 2 in the early 2000s as a response to the need for standardized data production. Thank you. And, uh, so I, I, um, I love this talk, and I love how uh, you talked about AWS, GCP. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. I thought someone was asking a question. My bad. Um, anyways, these criteria form the backbone of SOC 2. And so it's the gold standard for compliance trying to More certify their security efforts in America. And if you're doing B2B sales. Cloudflare. I consider that a cloud environment, and that's something I actively worry about access. Um, one I would ask, what are the oh, tools no worries, no worries. that you would point me to to start doing this kind of analysis in those kinds of environments? And uh, two, how would you kind of um, hypothetically, even if there isn't a tool? Oh, OK, sorry. No, 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 no worries. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, if you're doing B2B sales or selling to large enterprises in America, your customers are going to be asking you about your SOC 2 certifications. So now let's talk about controls. So controls are basically your com company's defense playbook. They're like policies, procedures, and practices to set up set up to mitigate risks and protect your company's interests. So you can think of them as the backbone of any robust security and compliance program. They'll, they'll set the guidelines of what's okay and what's not okay. So some examples, like policies like access management, vendor management, risk mitigation work, they all form together to protect everything from digital data to your personal physical space. And there will be regular reviews to ensure that these rules stay current and effective. Um, other examples of SOC 2 controls can also include like two-factor authentication to protect sensitive data, encryption protocols for data at rest and in transit, and detailed incident response plans. So now, there are different types of SOC 2 reports. There's a SOC 2 type 1 and a SOC 2 type 2. And the major difference is just the monitoring period. Type 1 is like a snapshot, while type 2 is when you're being monitored over a period of time. And I have a cheat hack that I really am very excited to share with you guys, but I'll share that later towards the end. But at the end of the day, SOC 2 type 2 is more well regarded, it's more comprehensive, and it shows the reliability of your systems and controls. So I will be mostly referring to SOC 2 type 2 from here on out. Also, many opt for type one due to a faster turnaround, but type one only confirms the right controls and written policies without testing if the controls actually work because they don't really ask for evidence. And another thing to know is that you actually don't need to get a type one before you get a type two. You can also just get a type two audit right away. So, sorry, I'm gonna just quickly connect um, I don't know why my hotspot is not working and I really need to sh show you guys this picture. Sorry. I know. I mean, I've, I've long been <laughs> okay, if this picture, if I can't connect to my hotspot, just imagine that there's a picture for me. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I, I'm still connecting to this Wi-Fi really quickly.
it's hard. I, I have been, but it hasn't been connecting. Okay, I think I'm barely... I have 14 minutes left. Okay, I think it should... Yeah, that's why. I don't know why my hot space. Yeah. yeah. I think there should be like a present button soon, but it's. Which button is you Oh, just. No, it's it's not loading. Okay, okay. I just don't know why it's not presenting. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. No, no, that's fine. Spots not popping up. Okay, it's okay. I'll just. No, 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 no. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, that's. Oh shoot. Do you think I could by any chance? Is this you? Sorry guys, just one minute. Okay, 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 and then, and then where's the present button? Okay, perfect, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so this is what the SOC 2 timeline should look like. Within the first to three months is like a pre-audit preparation. So this is where you prepare a list of controls and, and ensure that you're doing everything that you claim to be doing. Um, this is where the most work actually occurs. So you definitely should not underestimate it. So if you say that you list like 100 controls, you have to make sure that you're applying them consistently across your company and you maintain confidence in the implementation. Next, three to 12 months is the compliance observation period. Um, this period can have a lot of elapsed time, so you want to make sure that you have the right evidence. And this is like the cheat hack that I really want to show you guys. Um, you can do SOC 2 pretty fast, and it's not cheating. So many people expect that a 12-month SOC 2 observation period is important, and that is the case. But actually, at SEMGREP, when we first started, with our SOC 2 compliance journey, we actually had a three month observation period first. So we saved a lot of time when the auditors came in. And this approach makes customers happy because you can deliver results in four months instead of 14, which you're getting more customers, right? But the thing is you don't wanna apply that method too often or else you're paying for a SOC 2 audit every single time and that racks up a lot of money. And so what you can, what you can essentially do is start with a shorter observation period, like three months or however long you want, which will tighten the feedback loop. And if any issues arise during those three months, and if controls aren't working appropriately, you can catch them sooner. And then after that first round of SOC 2, you can maybe lengthen the feedback loop to like 12 months as your observation period. So that's the little cheat hack. Um, and then the first to three weeks is the official audit. And this is just like a lot of back and forth with your auditor and just making sure that you deliver the right evidence. And then the two to six weeks is just like the weight game. Um, your auditor will be creating a report and compiling all the information that you provided them. And during this time, you can just tell customers like, oh, the report is coming soon. So yeah.
So there is quite a process with stock two. You need to prepare and make sure that you are aware with the trust service by criteria and you define your audit scope. You also have to make sure that you spot the weak points in your controls and tighten them up and create detailed records of your policies, procedures, and controls. And like, you want to make sure that you also establish clear goals within like your company's security compliance ob objectives to make sure that you can identify key points throughout your organization. So the SOC 2 timeline varies depending on the complexity of the organization and your existing security programs as well too. And larger organizations or those with a complex infrastructure will require more time with more compliance and more of a longer observation period. But it's also really essential to engage in stakeholders from different departments to ensure a comprehensive understanding of security practices. So overall, you can have a smoother audit process. There's a lot of organizations and departments in your companies that are all affiliated with getting your SOC 2 compliance. Like for example, the engineering infra team, um, you would have to work with controls regarding like access control, change management, code review, SRE, it's like incident response, monitoring and logging and creating like a disaster tabletop um, and business, continue, it, business continuity plans. HR, you need to make sure you get background checks, security aware, awareness trainings, and making sure you have like the proper termination procedures. Sales, data protection, security, vulnerability ma management, even marketing. Like no one ever really talks to marketing, but they're getting a lot of personal information. So you wanna make sure that you're communicating throughout with in the different departments in your organization. So now I'm like very excited to show you guys this word. Maybe you guys know it, Riz. <laughs> um, it's the new word for charisma and you can definitely Riz up your customers with your SOC 2 report, honestly. But essentially it's just, it's like slang for style, charming someone and so forth. But I sort of wanted to talk about like the benefits of SOC 2 and even if your customers aren't already asking for the SOC 2, passing a SOC 2 audit objectively proves that you're taking steps to prevent a data breach. Um, it can also be a game changer in customer relationships, especially in a world where data breaches often make headlines. Having SOC 2 certification assures customers that their data is safe in your hands because you're taking protective measures. Also, this trust can translate into more increased business opportunities because it's like good credibility, right? As clients are more likely to partner up or with companies that prioritize security. Um, another benefit to keep in mind is that companies will also regularly reject potential vendors for a lack of SOC 2 certification. Um, even though it's not mandated, a lot of companies actually look for SOC 2 certifications. It's not like Europe and GDPR, but a lot of companies will look at, look at it. Another thing to keep in mind is that it, SOC 2 also enforces security basics and it keeps, and it makes sure that you're building continuous living processes. Um, especially in a world where there's so many things that are happening, so many changes, so many technical complications and so forth, by making sure that you're regularly updating security practices and addressing vulnerabilities, um, this can make sure that you and your company are maintaining compliance and also improving your overall security posture. And I think this overall approach will also make sure that you're staying ahead from any evolving threats in the future and building customer um, trust. So now for some critiques. Um, when did CPAs become certified lover cybersecurity experts? Um, so certified lover boy is from Drake. If y'all are maybe not aware, Drake is the rapper who was just like in the headlines recently. <laughs> um, but CPAs didn't really major in computer science or security. So auditor quality is really important. Um, and some are strict while others may not be. Another thing is that auditors can be susceptible to cyber dazzle. And cyber dazzle is like a term that I learned from my manager, but it's like when someone who isn't as technical might see something and might see something technical in front of them, like 
regarding like evidence that you provide them. And it could maybe hypothetically lead the auditor to not conduct an audit properly. That's just like a hypothetical situation for you all auditors here. Like I know you guys are probably doing things great. Um, <laughs> but the quality of the audit very much depends significantly on the auditor's expertise. And just making sure that you select an auditor with a strong background in cybersecurity can enhance the audit process throughout. And it just makes sure that you have a thorough and accurate assessment of your controls, which is important for your company. Another thing is that SOC 2 is bougie, um, or it could be expensive. So the cost of preparation, implementation, and auditing can be significant, especially for small businesses or startups. And the audit itself can range anywhere from $10,000 to $50,000. And that's literally just the audit itself. We're not even counting the investment in pen testing and other security measures necessary to meet compliance. So while that cost might seem slightly steep, especially for startups or smaller companies, um, SOC 2 compliance can definitely provide a substantial return on investment, especially if you're demonstrating a commitment to security. Um, you can gain access to larger markets and customers who require stringent data protection standards. Another thing to keep in mind is that SOC 2 is like a broad umbrella. It covers general security principles, but it doesn't really deep, it doesn't really dive deep into like AppSec, right? So just because you're SOC 2 compliant doesn't mean you're bulletproof. Companies can still get hacked even though you're SOC 2 compliant. So it's also crucial to recognize there are some limitations to SOC 2 and there are proactive steps to address them. Um, and this could also just include conducting regular code reviews, implementing secure code practices, or using tools like static and dynamic application tools. So overall, TLDR, SOC 2 compliance isn't a one and done deal. It's always about continuous improvement. SOC 2 compliance is an ongoing process that requires organizations to regularly update their security controls and practices. And this iterative approach will help companies adapt to new threats and technological advancements and ensuring that they remain secure over time. Um, SOC 2 isn't really like just about checking a box. It's about building trust and also ensuring your customer's data is safe. And the journey to compliance might seem challenging, but the benefits far outweigh the costs. And by prioritizing, your security and compliance, um, your organization or company can build a strong foundation for future growth forever. So yeah. Um, also just like a quick shout out to the coolest manager, Jonathan, he's not here for exposing me to SOC 2 and GDPR. And then Tom, my B-Sides mentor, Leaf, Tanya, Andy, Margaret, and Misha. I think none of this would have been possible without this talk. And so thank you so much for listening and feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn.